Hi everybody, I'm Hafiz Rosli. I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Mark Leeson at Iowa State University. I am from Malaysia, a small country that is neighboring to Thailand, Singapore and Indonesia. I am very excited to be here today to talk to you about my research on apples at ISU. The research is part of joint project with Purdue University. They are doing the same field studies as what I'm doing here at Iowa. The funding agency for this work is North Central Region IPM program. Today, we are here at the ISU Horticulture Research Station to have a look at the research that I'm doing for my PhD. The first part of my research here at ISU Horticulture Research Station is validating a disease warning system for city blotch and fly speck, which we shorten as SBFS. SBFS is a disease that appears as black blotches and black blemishes on apples, which reduce the quality of the fresh fruit in the market value. In order to control SBFS disease, most of the growers in the upper Midwest follows a calendar-based spray schedules, spraying fungicide every 10 to 14 days, shortly after beta fall until harvest. At ISU, we have developed the Gleason Dudwiller system, a SBFS disease warning system for Midwest that uses the measurement of relative humidity in order to decide when should we apply the second cover fungicide spray. Now here comes the big question. What is the point of using SBFS disease warning system? Basically, the SBFS disease warning system enables us to save fungicide spray while still controlling SBFS. By using the relative humidity information, we can spray only when it is really necessary, not just because it is Tuesday. In some years, the SBFS disease warning system has saved two to three fungicide spray compared to the calendar-based spray schedule with no increase in SBFS damage on the apples. We are field testing the relative humidity based SBFS disease warning system because it is still fairly new and we want to make sure that the system works consistently enough for the apple growers to use. Here's how the SBFS disease warning system works. After the usual first cover spray goes on, we wait to spray until we have measured a total of 215 hours of relative humidity higher than 97%. Once we reach that threshold, it's time to spray again. For later sprays, after the threshold has been reached, we will return to a calendar-based schedule, spraying fungicide every 10 to 14 days. In earlier trials, the SBFS disease warning system worked well, with one exception. The exception was that the relative humidity sensors perform too variable at high levels of relative humidity like 97%. So, we looked for a lower relative humidity threshold and decided on using 90%. At that level, what we found was the relative humidity sensors perform or behave much more consistently. The new threshold, which we are testing right now, is 385 hours of relative humidity greater than 90%. To monitor the relative humidity in the orchard, we put two relative humidity sensors at about 1.5 meters high from the ground in the tree canopy in the early season. We collect the data weekly from the first cover spray until the threshold is reached, adding up the hours when the relative humidity is greater than 90%. A 
Another aspect of my study is looking at the use of various fungicide. One treatment uses the conventional fungicide theophanic metal and captain. Both fungicide have some serious human health and environmental safety hazards, but they are less expensive. The second treatment is the reduced risk fungicide flint profite. They are a bit safer but also more expensive. Based on last year's result, we found that both treatments were equally effective combating SPFS disease. This year, we are testing both treatments again to confirm our result. This is the second year we are doing this field study. At harvest, I will examine 50 apples from each tree to look for SBFS colonies and keep track of the disease. At the end of this season, we will have two years of result and I will return in another video to share with you what we have learned. Thank you. Right behind me is the field plot for my second experiment which involves assessing the effect of combining surfactants and fungicide in field application for control of fruit rot diseases. Our main focus here is to find adjuvant products that can increase the effectiveness of fungicide captain against fruit rot diseases while avoiding the phytotoxicity to the leaves and fruit. Surfactants are adjuvants that are able to lower the surface tension between two liquids or between a liquid and a solid. In this way, surfactants can improve the efficacy of fungicide on crops and therefore, surfactant can reduce the number of fungicide application in the field. The problem is that some of the fungicide surfactant combination can cause phytotoxicity on apple trees. The phytotoxicity symptoms include leaf burning and fruit resetting, that is, brown scars on the fruit surface. For these field trials, I'm assessing the effect of several combinations of different surfactants with fungicide captain in controlling fruit rots and their effect in causing phytotoxicity. This is the actual fungicide and these are the surfactants that we're testing. In 2013, I saw minimal phytotoxicity on my Gold Rush, Liberty and Red Free trees or fruits. I'm back in the field in 2014 to confirm 2013 result. When we combine our data with the field trial from Purdue University, we should have good handles on how adjuvant products and fungicide captain affect phytotoxicity and hopefully fruit growth control as well. Thank you.